Hi guys and welcome to my review of episode 5 Eastwatch. It's not going to be a video review today because my throat is absolutely killing me. So the episode starts out with Bronn pulling Jamie out of the water. What we speculated that would be who pulled, who saved him from the dragon fire and uh, obviously eventually pulls him out of the water. Not quite sure how easy it is to pull a full man dressed in armour out of essentially the biggest sort of abyss in the universe and I don't quite sure, I still don't know how these lakes in Westeros work but it's shallow deep and then obviously shallow at the other end. It's quite a big abyss in that uh, lake but there we are. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing between Jamie and Bronn just basically my favourite bit is like we're, we're f <laughs> you're fucked. Don't you mean we're fucked? No. Dragons where our partnership ends, <laughs> you know, brilliant. Uh, I I am disappointed, however, that it just jumps from them teleporting from them back to King's Landing. I kind of wanted to see some sort of like fugitive kind of escape and evasion scenario, but don't get to see it. Um, basically, back on the uh, Gold Road, you see uh, Tyrion like scouring the uh, aftermath of the battle, all the dead. Soldiers, you know, hiding behind their shields, absolutely burnt to a crisp. Seeing the horror of war, and then we see obviously the prisoners of war with Randall and Dickon <laughs> uh, being sort of marched towards uh, Daenerys and Drogon, where they're sitting on the hill. And obviously, Daenerys, you know, says to them, "I'm not the same as Cersei. I'm going to, you know, be better." You know, and obviously get someone wants them to bend the knee. I think it's quite good the way they, some of them go down, and then when they, sh then when the Drogon like shouts at them, sort of thing, roars, they all go down, and then it's any uh, like Randall and Dickon being, oh, Dickon being an idiot essentially, not heeding the words of his father. Even Tyrion says to him, "You're the future of your house. You need to like just bend the knee, you idiot," and he doesn't, and both of them get incinerated, which obviously promptly makes all the other Lannister prisoners of war bend the knee. I do find it interesting though how this is sort of turning into um, turning into sort of Tyrion questioning, not questioning, sort of making himself feel better, like saying, give him a choice, she gave him a choice. He said he just refused to bend the knee, he didn't. He was incinerated, like, you know, trying to convince himself that he didn't do anything wrong. Whereas Varys is like saying, yeah, that's what I used to convince myself, but actually you sort of feel responsible for it. But in my opinion, Daenerys did give him the opportunity. She can't be seen as a soft, you know, pliable queen. She's got to see, she's got to strike fear into people in order to lead them before she can become like that sort of fair queen. But I don't think this is necessarily showing that she's going down the path of her father and turned into a mad queen. It would be cool if she did, but I don't think it. That's I don't think that's the way it's going to do. But uh, it's fun to see Tyrion sort of reflecting with Varys on the fact that they were incinerated, which is a shame because. You know, he would probably have been a powerful ally to have. But then we have Bran in the Godwoods walking into uh, Ravens, uh, which we've seen them in the trailer, sort of scouting out. I think it was. I think it was cool. I don't know if it was intentional. Obviously, it was intentional because they showed it. But where Bran walked into, three, I think it was three Ravens. You saw three Ravens get walked into. Assuming that he walked into them all, but you only see three being walked into. Maybe a reference to the three-eyed Raven thing. I don't know. But yeah, we have them scouting out, seeing the army of the dead, as you know, and then telling them that we've got to send ravens. Obviously, obviously the Night King blasts, not blasts, but stares at the ravens, which breaks the connection. So another little hint into his powers as well, what he can do. Sansa, you know, she's like sort of not queen, would you say she's queen regent at this point? She's sort of Lady of Winterfell, but she's sort of caretaker of Winterfell at the moment. And you have... Uh, Glover and uh, oh god what's his name Royce is it Jan Royce something like that that guy you know Oscar is it oh, not Oscar Blaketon who is it the guy from Heartbeat you know that's my that's that's where I've known him from the like Lord of the Manor in Heartbeat but anyway but you have him like sort of saying that you know we should have chosen you and she's like nah you know John's our king also you got uh, Arya telling Sansa she's hot <laughs> <laughs> she's harboring thoughts, you know. It, 
it's it's funny because it's <laughs> it's funny to see because it's like Sansa's like uh, before they lose not without their heads they don't she's like okay crazy crazy bitch wanting to chop people's heads off I think it's showing Sansa's looking at Arya and she's Arya's changed she's now more sinister more like nuts it shows later of um, uh, Arya stalking uh, Baelish seeing what he's up to but it's basically a ploy she's 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 been little fingered essentially like he knew that she was there and she he just orchestrated this sort of thing to get the message I can't remember really what the message is about I think I think when I, I, when I paused it it's it's what's I think it's what Sansa when she wrote the the letter to Rob telling him to like give up and bend the knee I think that's what it was I'm not quite sure uh, let me know in the comments if that's wrong I, but when I saw it and paused it I think that's what I gathered from it um, yeah but you know we also have Old Town as well the maesters <laughs> with Sam um, you know trying to convince all the maesters that we need to look into this problem since we got the letter from Bran we need to look into this problem it's it's definitely what we need to do but obviously they refuse and it's funny, is that, is that the uh, guy that's uh, father and brother was just incinerated by a dragon? Yes, I haven't got the heart to tell him. Oh, yeah. Fun, uh, you know, and now he's left the Citadel because he leaves the Citadel upon uh, mulling over that conversation. Um, so it, whether or not he's going to find out, I don't know who he's going to find out from John, perhaps, or from Daenerys. Maybe maybe he uh, meets her and she's like, I'm Sam Tarly. He's like, Tarly? Ooh. Um... I may or may not have incinerated your father and brother. I mean, I don't think he's going to be too upset about his father being incinerated, but his brother, perhaps? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But yeah, up, yeah, complete. I nearly forgot this. Um, you got Gilly reading the High Septum's, like, stuff. And, um, yeah. Ragar. Raga, or something. Married another woman or something. Obviously, Rhaegar. But it also means that he is legit. Jon Snow is technically legit. He is not a bastard. He is a true-born child of them. They could have been the annulment that's happened and they are officially married in secret. So he is a legit Stargarian? Is that what we're going to call it? And I, at this point, I'm not quite sure how hierarchy works. But I'm pretty sure this makes... Does this make Jon Snow more... Because he's a male. Does that make him more liable to the Iron Throne than Daenerys? I'm not quite sure. The son of the Mad King's son. I think that makes him more legitimate. I think. Let me know. Amazing. We have the, obviously the, the great scene in it. I think this comes after the incineration scene. I can't remember which way around it goes. But you then, obviously at Dragonstone, you have Jon face to face with Drogon uh, give me a nice little stroke it, it's funny because Daenerys is on top looking at him looking down like don't eat him don't eat him don't eat him I need him and um, you know just pets him and um, it, it, it it's it's good because it's like I don't know if the dragon sort of knows or it's just because Jon shows, shows an air sort of confidence um, that Drogon just lets him touch him I don't know I don't, maybe he obviously only attacks probably humans when she says so I mean the dragons are smart so I think they can differentiate obviously they can differentiate friend from foe at this point otherwise he'll just be burning everything um, but yeah we see obviously Jorah come back with some looks like new ar newish armour that he's got, obviously got from somewhere I don't know if it's the new armour or just armour that he's had before but you know looking good has a nice little thing offers his service again to just embraces him you know gets a boner Brilliant, you know. John now talking in the, the planning view about they realise that Bran's alive, Arya's alive, you know, the half brother, half sister, and you know, Bran saw the army marching towards East Watch by the sea, um, and then Tyrion presents this great idea of why don't we just bring a white to show Cersei that the dead are real, and then we can parlay and then join forces temporarily, and then obviously. Uh, Tyrion has this great idea to go and make that happen by talking to Jamie, which we uh, reaffirms the whole zipping around sort of bullshit that he somehow sends a raven to Bronn 
Bronn sets up the meeting, Tyrion gets there, it's not clear how much time has passed, but obviously quite a few weeks, probably a week or so, maybe it passed between those two things, but we have obviously, um, is that before that? But anyway, but we have uh, Jamie uh, telling, revealing to Cersei that Tyrion didn't murder Joffrey, it was actually Elena, you know, and she's obviously convinced of it because the way she says it's it, who would Marjorie want to have had someone more pliable like Toman is pliable um, you know you know easily led so obviously she she's convinced by that point but uh, we have obviously the meeting between Bronn and Tyrion so it's the first time they've been together for a very long time actually so it's, it's a very touching scene in the way that Tyrion wants Jamie to be like friends with him again like he wants his brother back and Jamie's still pissed off with him essentially you can see that on his face and not reacting to Tyrion's jokes even though I think he wanted to because he's sort of like you know his brother's back but he still heeds Tyrion's um, call and you know tells Cersei that this is what's happening this is how it go and even Cersei knows that's happened and wants to do the same thing because it's in their best interest because they know they're going to lose the war so it's going to be interesting how that sort of pans out with getting the white down to King's Landing, it's going to be weird a bit more intrigue but I think that's going to be more in season 8, Cersei sort of reveals that she is pregnant with um, a, new, a new child and obviously they're, 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 Jamie asks how, who's gonna, who are you going to say is the father? Well, I'm going to say you're the father because you know fuck everyone else and the one thing I don't think if she pl when she said he plans to punish Bronn for arranging the uh, meeting between Tyrion, I hope she doesn't or doesn't attack Bronn or Jamie doesn't attack Bronn because Bronn's awesome. Uh, we don't want to see anything happen to Bronn. I want Bronn to make it, even if he just sort of buggers off. You know, it'd just be great. But then it's interesting when Cersei hugs Jamie and tells him to never betray her again. He sort of looks like I th I don't know. Could this be the first sort of tumbling of the dominoes between their relationship I don't know but I think the I think the pregnancy sort of solidified it more I don't know it's hard to tell also we have uh, Davos finding Gendry Gendry's back he even makes a reference to him still rowing it's hilarious but Gendry has the Warhammer I'm not quite sure um, I don't think it's the same Warhammer as I don't think it's the same Warhammer as uh, Robert had. I think it's just a little play on and a bit like a recreation. But it has the Warhammer with the stags carved in the, uh, the antlers and stuff, and it looks awesome. And then we have that really cool scene with uh, Davos and Gendry and Tyrion, where they're the, the gold cloaks, where Gendry absolutely annihilates them with his hammer. It is the most brutal bludgeoning in the face, and his note, oh, it's so good. Uh, but yeah. That's, that's fun. And Daros and Tyrion return with Gendry, don't they? They return with Gendry to Dragonstone and basically Davos tells him not to say anything. But obviously I like the fact that Jon Snow and Gendry are like Robert and Ned. They, they, they've got this sort of trust. They need to sort of trust each other. He just goes with that. They should trust each other. They, the, their fathers did. Um, and you've got that sort of nice sort of bond between them instantaneously because he's been honest with him but also jokes and he sort of looks a bit offended the fact he's shorter uh, but the, the fact is he sort of laughs he laughs at it and they sort of agree that he accompanies them so he's part of the team now which is good because you've got Baratheon, Stark, uh, Targaryen you know you've got an alliance forming between these loose loose sort of fragments fragments of the uh, houses that once were um yeah go to east watch <laughs> talking with torment he kind of wants brienne to be there which is quite funny that's like, like a funny scene but uh you know we see the fact that uh the hound uh thoro 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 whatever his name is uh <laughs> man bun um, and obviously beric dondarian are in the cells there and they have this sort of loose alliance sort of everyone has a reason to distrust each other or they've got history and they've got beef between each other uh, but they're all in it for the same goal so they go out together in like a nice triangle arrowhead of destiny out into the wilderness this is where I sort of think to myself right so your your objective 
I'm assuming your barbaric Dondarrion objective is different to yours, but you're going out there to capture a white, but they don't really know where the whites are. Are they going after the main army? Obviously, in the trailers, we see they're fighting the army of the dead, but I don't know if that's because they just ran across them by accident. But obviously, they were trying to go find the army to get a white, but at the same time, going up against a whole army of the dead just to capture one, not a good plan. It, it just seemed to me like they just sort of rushed out, right, we're going to go get one. They, obviously there's probably no plan beyond the wall no, no plan sort of sticks in place but they kind of they kind of need to think it through a little bit obviously I think that's what's going to be their downfall because obviously you've seen the promo that they're being fucked over um, but we're going to lose some characters for sure I think even if it's just some no names we're definitely going to obviously we're going to see some death next thing next uh, episode but it, it just seems have they even got the dragon glass weapons I looked in the promo and said, I, I, I don't know and it, it's kind of. I think we're gonna find. We're gonna definitely find out how much of the plan they had before they left. But at this point, it seems that like the plan's kind of lacking, and it's gonna bite them in the ass. It's it's gonna be an interesting last two episodes. It's just. I hope episode seven is like the longest one, like an hour and a half or something, because. It, essentially, now that we look, if you look back at it, the amount of episodes that are gonna be next season, you, we're kind of halfway to the end, as it were. And they can't introduce any more new characters. If they do, they've got to like explain them and build their characters up amazingly. And at this point, we don't have that much of a connection with the Night King to sort of... He's a threat, but he's not an interesting threat. He's not got substance to him. He's just sort of an icy guy that looks cool. And you know that he can get shit done. And, but you don't know his motives, really. You don't know the extent of his powers. You don't know sort of his history too much. You know, it, it, it's going to be... They're going to have to book him out next episode a lot um, in order to make him, like, not relatable, but sort of like a, a, an enemy that you sort of know about more. They can't bring in any more characters at this point. If they do, it's got to be done very, very fast, but at that in the grand scheme of things, you're not going to sort of feel the same connection as you have with these characters. So I think, character-wise, we're just going to stick with what we've got. They're going to start killing them off. Or, is it, they're not being killed off anymore? I don't know. We haven't lost that many characters that we actually care about. You know, so... It's going to be interesting. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how we are going to these last two episodes will be broken down like what's going to happen in the last episode obviously we're going to have the Sansa Arya thing going on with Littlefinger we're going to have uh, Cersei her side you're going to have I hope next episode is going to be more focusing on the the party going out to go get um, a white to prove <clears throat> It, it's interesting. It's inter I'm interested to see how they break it down, but I'm just worried that because they only got is it only season eight left, and that's it. It's kind of they're running out of time, and even though they broke it down to seven episodes and they said they're going to speed things up, the episodes haven't been that long. You've got obviously last episode was only forty nine minutes or fifty one minutes, something like that. It was the shortest one the series so far they got a lot done but it just wasn't ugh, it just wasn't enough they're run out of time essentially but there we have it that's my interpretation and sort of review on that episode so back hopefully to normal sort of procedure next week um, hope you've enjoyed the video guys I'll see you next week for another review